Today, I thought I'd have a quick chat around smart trainers and trainers in general, their resale value, refurbished parts, and maybe justifying that purchase if you're looking at investing and it's sitting on the fence and undecided. This might help. First up today, the dollar value I'm talking in is Aussie dollars, Australian dollars, and the Australian market, which is what I'm familiar with. Let's look at a few examples of resale value on indoor trainers. One of my favorite trainers, the Le Mans Revolution, released in 2012 here in Australia for a retail price of around $500. Two to three years later in 2014 and 15, the resale value on these is still around $450 to $500. Then along came the 11 speed version of the Revolution Trainer with a lot higher recommended retail of between $650 to $700, if not more. They saw the market demand was there and they jacked the prices up. That unit itself really wasn't that popular because we can do hacks on the 10 speed version to make it 11 speed compatible. To this day in 2018, we still see the Le Mans Revolution 10 speed version going for between $350 to $450 online in the second hand market. Factoring in inflation and a ton of ergo sessions, that's next to no loss at all on that unit. That's pretty good. Over to a few examples of smart trainers. The Tax Neo released late 2015, recommended retail here in Australia of around $1,800. You can pick them up for around $1,700. On the second hand market, those units are still going for around $1,200 to $1,400. Not a lot of loss there at all. Next up, I saw a Tax Genius unit that had been sold for $650 after five years of use. That's not a bad return on investment for a unit that was $1,000 new. I still think you could have got more for it. There was also a Tax Vortex listed and sold for $500 and it had a recommended retail of $549. So somebody used that for a season or two and only lost $49, not bad. Other trainers popular here in Australia, the Kicker Gen 1 units released back in 2014. Recommended retail back then of around $1,200 to $1,300 four years ago, still selling for $800 to $1,100 if they're in good condition. That's not bad at all. The Kicker Snap Gen 1's going for $450 to $600. The Kicker Snap Gen 2, still selling for around $600 to $650 on the second hand market, pre-owned. And that's with a recommended retail of $749. Jumping over to spare parts and refurbishing. Trainer manufacturers do have your back with this, which is a good thing. They're not just break and throw out. If you do break a part or need a replacement part, or you've picked one up missing a few parts, you can dive in, find out exactly what spare part you need and reorder those specifically. Jumping over here to one of the most comprehensive ones I've found, which is the tax.com slash spare dash parts. I'll put the URL below, but there it is as well. Scrolling through here, we have a list of everything tax manufacturer and all the spare parts we can get. So jumping over to the original version of the Neo Smart that has the Edco free hub body. I believe they're all Shimano free hub bodies on the newer versions. But if you're looking at a power pack, or a front wheel riser, they're all listed there. Probably more complex ones being the Vortex. Let's just say you've picked up a secondhand Vortex or you've put five or six years into your current Vortex looking for a refurb and don't want to fork out for a brand new unit. You can buy every single part that's listed there, even through to the uh, resistance unit itself. So the T2181, T2181, the Vortex Smart Resistance Unit. You can simply contact Tax or your local distributor, order that part, replace it, away you go. It's good as new. Similar for the Pursuto Smart there with all the full breakdown and even things like their virtual reality steerer. Yes, it does exist. It works with the tax software, but even things like that, right down to the nuts and bolts, you can order spares of those. So quite a simple process there to find the spare parts that you may need or are missing from a trainer you've just purchased to get a few more seasons out of that investment. I'd call it an investment too rather than a cost. Easy to justify it that way. So there we have it, a look at the resale value of trainers here in Australia for both smart trainers and not so smart trainers. They do hold their value pretty well, which makes justifying that initial price tag a little bit easier. All right, let us know where you are, US, UK, Europe especially, and the resale value of smart trainers there. Do they hold their value or do they drop in price? All right, if it's somewhat where you are, watch out for a lot of uh, manufacturers having some sales and it's coming up to Eurobike as well. So keep an eye out for a lot more happening in this space. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.